Hello, my name is Isaac Brown, and I am a graphic designer, developer, and a person who wants to do anything that fits his fancy, I guess you can say. And today, um, I'm going to be working on creating a watermark. It was something that was requested by one of my friends, Tani Torres. She is a magnificent photographer, and she asked, how do I create a simple watermark? Well, Tani, I'm going to do you one better. Not only am I going to show you how to do a watermark, which is a very simple process, I'm also going to show you how to automate it so you can do this process without having to manually do it on every single photo. It'll automatically put all these images onto your photos so you'll be done lickety split. All right, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up Adobe Photoshop, okay? Now, all of what we're doing is gonna be in Adobe Photoshop. So just giving you a heads up, you know, you have to have Adobe Photoshop to do this. I'm also using the latest version, Adobe Photoshop 2020. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna to go to open and we're going to open our image or logo or signature, whatever you might have. And we're going to go to the desktop and we're gonna to go to my folder that I created for this project. And I'm going to click on my logo. This is my logo. Um, so this logo I've had forever. Um, I've added a couple of things like these little squiggly lines and things like that. But for the most part, I've always used this as my logo. It stands for Aizaku. Okay. <laughs> that was the Japanese name that my, uh, Japanese teacher gave me because of the way I say my name, Isaac. So Aizaku, you know, there you go. Little history of why, uh, that logo exists, but moving on, you don't care about that. You care about getting this prepared as a watermark. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into our layers and we have it set as background. We don't want that. We want to change this to an actual layer. So we're going to double click. Okay. And we're going to name our layer logo. Press OK. And now it's a logo, which means we can now edit and manipulate this image. All right. So the next part we're going to do is we're going to go and select all of this white space. We want to get rid of this white space. I like to do when it comes to something like this is use color range. Now what color range does is it automatically sees the difference. It, it looks for all the, the white spaces, the negative spaces, and it selects it for you. Um, now, if you're in a situation where, let's see, like right here, where you still have areas that aren't quite selected, you can use the eyedropper tool, the plus eyedropper tool, and just select around those areas, you know, that are not quite, you know, what you're looking for. But we, we don't have to worry about that. We can just, uh, it already kind of sees everything, so we can just leave it at that. Press OK. And as you can see, it selected all the white space. Now, why do we want to select all the white space? Because we want to get rid of the white space. We want it transparent. We just want the logo. Now, just to let you know, when you have any type of image that you want to use as a watermark, keep it simple. Don't go fancy with fancy colors. Keep it white and black and just focus on the image. And to make things easier so you don't have to go through this process, make it a vector. If you save it as a vector image, it keeps its its uh, transparency. And if you want to change from a vector to a pixelated image, save it as a PNG because it keeps its transparency. All right, so I'm going to delete this and look at that, bam. And I, all I did was press delete, by the way, if you want to know how I deleted it, nothing special. Now all of the white space is transparent. Now I'm going to press Control D and Control D in Photoshop deselects. And now I have everything that I want. I have the actual black image. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit transparent. And the reason is this is because when you're working with pixelated images, it's never 100% black. It's 
some form shades of gray, you know? So it's going to take everything that isn't that color away from it. So your image might be slightly transparent because of that. But it doesn't matter because we want this to be transparent anyway. And talking about transparency, let's make this even more transparent, okay? I'm going to go over here to layer and go to opacity. I'm gonna change this to 60%, all right? And now I'm just going to save it. I'm gonna to go to file, save as, save on your computer. Then I'm going to go to PNG because we wanna create a image that is transparent. And we're going to call this black logo, okay? And reason why we're gonna call it black logo because we're gonna make a white version of this logo. All right, let me save, press okay. Now we're gonna do a white version of this logo. All right, so now I'm just gonna get this brush and I'm just gonna paint over, oh, yeah, uh, that don't look right, does it? Ooh, that don't look right at all. Well, the reason is, is that because nothing is selected, it's gonna paint over the whole thing, even if it's transparent or not. It's gonna change the whole area white. So what do we do? How do we fix this? So first things first, we wanna undo what we did, right? You're gonna press Control Z as in zoo, all right? And that's gonna undo what we just did, okay? I'm gonna bring the opacity back to 100% because it just looks better that way for right now. It's just a lot cleaner and crisper and I know what I'm doing. And we're going to click on the transparency block. And what this does is it's gonna lock all of the transparent areas. So now when I go over it with my brush, oh, look at that. It's only painting the areas that has the black in it in none of the transparent areas. And that's what this tool does. It paints right over the black area. All right, well, now we have our white logo. We're gonna put this now at 60% again. All right, and we're gonna save this. So I'm gonna use a shortcut, Control-Shift-S. And what Control-Shift-S does is that it opens your save as. Save on your computer. And I'm going to rename this logo to white. And of course, let me make that lowercase. And of course, we're gonna make this into a PNG, right? All right, now it's saved, ready to go. Press okay, we want it large, we don't wanna make it small. All right, now we have this ready to go. Now our next step of what we're going to do is we're going to go through the automated process so we can set this up for all of our photo images that we need. 